So without much further ado, let's, uh, let's start, shall we, with uh, Alia Salim. So, uh, Hello, Ali can everyone hear me? Hi, you have to bear with me because I'm a little bit nervous. I've never spoken in front of so many people before. Um, I've been in Islamic education from a very young age. I started at Madrasas when I was maybe six or seven. Went from Pakistani Madrasas to Arabic-led ones where we learned Arabic language and more authentic versions of Islam, namely um, Salafi Islam. Um, at 11, I was enrolled in a private Islamic boarding school, which meant that they were given quite a lot of rights to dictate our national curriculum and also what we did. Um, my agnosticism started when I was around 12, and it was repressed uh, re repeatedly, and I was told not to spread my corruption to other students, not to speak about LGBT rights and how maybe God made us gay, and um, not to pollute the minds of other girls. I was always in trouble, constantly rebellious, constantly in trouble, and um, I think the worst thing about the school really was the national curriculum. It was restricted in every way possible. So we were taught English, um, science, but we weren't taught evolution or sex education. I had to teach myself evolution at 20, having struggled all those years not knowing anything about it. In terms of sex education, the offset guidelines, which have been now dropped, um, allowed sex education to be taught underneath Islamic studies. Anybody who has any idea about what female sexuality is inside Islamic studies would know that that was terribly wrong. Also, history wasn't taught to us at all. We were given um, Islamic history instead, which is actually the stories of prophets and of Muhammad and his companions, which, are, which is not history at all. And so it took me a lot of time to realize that what I was taught was wrong. Um, we were also not taught geography, so I couldn't point to Pakistan on a map. Um, we weren't taught um, music, we weren't allowed music in the school, and we weren't taught art, design, technology, and this all happened in Britain. I went from 2000 to 2006, and it continues. They say that it's for diversity and for acceptance, but the reality is that parents are adults and they make these decisions about their lives and their religious beliefs, but children don't have a say in their religious identities. And um, the controversial guidelines have been attacked routinely again and again and again, and the stress is always put upon maintaining the character, the religious character of schools, and referring to young people as Muslims, Christian, Jews, and so forth. Now, I was expelled from the school for having a camera. <laughs> I was publicly expelled in front of the entire school about 19 days before I was to leave. No regulatory body or authority ever found out about it and nobody ever confronted the issue, even though it caused me great humiliation and shame. Now, after I, I left the school, I did go to Pakistan for a year. Before that, I went to Canada for two months. And um, the school in Pakistan was a lot more accommodating actually, they kind of gave you the freedom to interpret Islam as you wanted. And I, and I became quite religious out there, you know, I started to wear the face veil willingly. So I think mainly what I want to stress is that after the Trojan school things, the Trojan school scandal happened, what I, what I heard again and again and again was, well, these were secular state schools and it's outrageous. But just because independent schools are funded by parents and charities doesn't mean that those children do not matter doesn't mean that I didn't matter, it wasn't important that I didn't learn about history, that I didn't know about World War I, World War II, I didn't know about that the Cold War wasn't actually a, a proper a war, I didn't understand what that meant. And so children are being deprived of their education. On top of that, the institutions are being used as a way to control girls' sexuality and boys' sexuality as well. And so there's no place in these schools for the transgressive student, for the pianist, for the lesbian, and for the agnostic. And it is essential that we realize that all of those people are part of this society and they need to have the same rights and the same experiences and also to have a, a safe place to be in which they're not going to be mocked and to be bullied by teachers and members. And so I do campaign for secular education and this is the first time that I'm really speaking out publicly, so I am quite nervous. But thank you for listening and I'll pass it on.